All right, I'm the Fly Ray Master, and let's talk about fixing shop culture. Now, I've been accused of being an a-hole, and I'm toxic, and all that kind of stuff, but let's talk about how you actually fix shop culture. Now, first off, everything comes from the top. You're a shop owner, you're a shop manager. The culture, well, is dependent on how you treat everyone below you. Now, of course, some people are truly just toxic people. I've worked with them. Everything's bad attitude and always a problem no matter what. But we're not going to talk about that kind of stuff. Let's talk about how you actually fix shop culture. First and foremost, it needs to be a collaborative effort. You know, the throwing the team term around is BS. We all know it's BS. For it to be truly a team, you need to collaborate with everyone on the team. And what I mean by that is as a shop owner or manager, you need to be listening to your employees. If people are complaining about stuff, the attitude of my way or the highway isn't collaborative. And that was a lot of the feedback I got from a lot of my videos after I got fired is, it's not your shop. You got to do what they say. And a lot of people are not like me. I'm outspoken. You know, I say what I think. I don't hide it. I'm very vocal. Most people, and this is studied <laughs> a lot, when they start getting frustrated with stuff that is not addressed, it lingers, it boils over. Plenty of studies have proven this. Not addressing employees' concerns just festers. There's no way around that. So somebody has a concern with this, how you're doing that, and you just dismiss them, which is literally what happened to me. In fact, that was one of my issues is my concerns about ticket distribution between the upper and lower shop was never addressed. It was always dismissed. Instead of addressing it and dealing with it, nope, they just told me I was wrong. Well, what does that do to your employee that's being told he's wrong and just my way or the highway? It festers a toxic environment. It just does. So all it does really for those issues is kick it down the road and let it fester. Instead of addressing it properly at the time of what happened, or what was going on, you know, simply explaining the reasons why you do something, the reasons why that's how it's done, justifying your reasons behind doing something instead of just, it's my way. I This is how we do it. Shut up. Literally, how you create toxic employees is you dismiss their ideas, their concerns, etc. You know, the pizza parties, Studies have shown it's ineffective for the reasons done. It's free food for the employees, but that's pretty much about it. And I never got pizza parties on a Friday because if you've ever watched a bunch of techs carb load, they're about useless for the rest of the day. But when everybody on staff is just eating, you know, four slices of pizza and is about to pass out, I don't know how you're knocking the rest of the day out very well. Anyway. It's really important to cultivate back and forth communications between everyone in the shop. It's not that hard. You know, going back to earlier, somebody on staff having a concern, instead of blowing off as, oh, you know, I'll look at that, consider that, is a much better response than my way or the highway. Simply staying, we'll look at it you know, doesn't address their concern, but at least placates them instead of blowing them off. And that's why language is so important because instead of just blowing them off, you go, oh, we'll look at that, see, you know, how we can change that, see if that'll, you know, we have a solution to, to that issue. But so often that's not how it's addressed. It's blown off. Now let's talk about flat rate and shop culture. Now, I've never worked in a toxic 
flat rate shop where it was dog eat dog, et cetera, like that. I've never worked in those kind of shops. You want to know why? Because it wasn't dog eat dog. People were trying to distribute tickets evenly and it wasn't screw over this guy to help out my buddy. That's where toxicity and flat rate comes from. When perceived or literally favoring somebody happens. It, you know, human nature. People tend to feed their buddy and starve out the other guy. And that's what leads to a toxic work environment with flat rate. Now, keep in mind, I'm not justifying one way or the other. I'm just trying to educate people on why toxicity happens in a flat rate shop. A perfect example at the old shop. I'm going to use the old shop examples a lot. BMWs without history dried up for the upper shop. You know, all the gravy oil leaks went downstairs. Suddenly, intermittent, you know, Elantras with check, you know, without a check engine light, they were getting BMWs. That kind of ticket distribution pushes for toxic flat rate mentality. Yes, eliminating flat rate would eliminate some of that, but with a hybrid system where you have commissions, it's still there because you're still dependent on the work you do to make your paycheck. And the same kind of toxicity can permeate. And that's a bigger problem in those kind of shops is work distribution has to be as fair as possible in that same vein, that guy that's getting his butt kicked day in, day out, because you're taking in all the junk that you're not billing properly for. And he watches that kid all day long make 15 hours a day because you're feeding him all the gravy because you pay him less. So you make more money. That leads to toxicity as well. You know, that envy of what that guy's doing instead of me, I, he's making all the money. Now, obviously billing properly for diagnostics. We'll solve a lot of those issues right there, <laughs> but that's another video. It's just so important to look at all of how you deal with everything in your shop. It's not one thing that causes problems. It's usually a very compounded issue. Technician A brings up, he's getting all these nightmare diags and he's not making that much money because they're not buying it. They're not buying the you know, upsell for additional time. And he's just stuck sitting there, thumb up his butt waiting for the next ticket. And he looks over at the other bay and, you know, the kid over there is doing ball joints, control arms and making, you know, buttloads of money while he's got blown out by a waste of time that probably shouldn't have been at the shop. You know, one of those cars that have been to 14 other shops, they couldn't fix it. So bring it to us and, you know, hope they want to spend more than five bucks fixing it. When he brings up that concern and, well, that's what I hired you for, so do it. And his paycheck is suffering because of it. That's going to lead to some toxic behavior. And that's one of my points about shop culture is, yes, there's toxic people that are in this industry. They are. And a lot more are created by toxic cultures. So let's talk the shop owner that goes, oh, everybody's happy. Everybody's, you know, everybody loves coming to work and yada, yada, yada. 95% of people won't complain. They'll just either take it because they need the job, don't think they can get a better job, or they just, leave and you have turn turnover and even on an exit interview they may not tell you why they're leaving oh i got a better opportunity so many people are afraid of confronting anybody about their toxic behavior because they they you know me is a perfect example you know i got told to stop making videos about my former boss because I need the, the, the job reference. Really? Yeah. So they're not going to tell you the truth. They are going to 
sugarcoat why they quit. Period. 95% of the people that quit are not going to give you the real reason on a exit interview. And I'd like to point out most exit interviews are already predetermined on how you ask your questions because how you lead the conversation is how the conversation is going to go. So if you're looking for an excuse to, to fire somebody, for instance, you're going to ask, about X, Y, Z. Is he, you know, is he pissed you off? Is he doing this? Is he doing this? You're going to get the answers you want, regardless if those are the reasons why they quit. So all of a sudden, you know, they're firing that toxic employee who just became a scapegoat because you're toxic. So it's a really, really important point of this video is to look at how Everyone in the shop is treated because that will determine how well changes can happen. You know, we've all had that service advisor that's just a dick. Nobody wants to work with them. Nobody will say anything to management because most people don't. The only time people complain about things is either when they're really upset and they're forced to or to friends or family. That's it. They're not going to complain to you. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to tell you what the real problem is. It's like diagnosing a car. You, you have to look past the check engine light and find the real cause of the problem with the vehicle. And most shop owners are sorely, sorely unprepared for looking at themselves or their higher up employees. You know, they just are. They can't see how crappy they can be sometimes. Whether that's through low emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is very different than intelligence, by the way. That's ability for empathy, sympathy, et cetera, et cetera. And it seems to be a very prominent trait with shop owners. Don't ask me why. Probably technicians as well, but that's not the subject of this video. But I want people to improve their culture because it's so important to the overall success and happiness of everyone in that business. The happier everyone is, really happy, not fake. Yeah, I don't want to get fired, so I, I take whatever the hell you give me kind of thing. That more collaborative environment will make a shop a much better, happier place than... And I'm sorry, most shop owners are my way highway. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.